Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. The Bishop of Saskatoon wishes to take possession of his see. Let him be received into his cathedral church.
Would the College of Consultors please come forward for the reading of the Apostolic Letter. Francis, Bishop, servant of the servants of God, to our venerable brother, Mark Hegeman, until now, Bishop of Mackenzie Fort Smith, appointed Bishop of Saskatoon. Greetings and apostolic blessing. They build bridges throughout the world. Those who live in peace with others, never returning evil for evil, but doing good to all. Reference, Romans chapter 12, verses 17 to 18. We called to the office of being solicitors for the whole church, consider it necessary to gladly bestow the authority to govern the people of God upon those who through their exemplary lives and the fulfillment of the precepts of Christ are prepared to assume this ministry of mercy. Carefully considering these things, we turned our mind to the spiritual needs of the Sea of Saskatoon, which, vacant after the transfer of our venerable brother, Donald Joseph Bolin, to the Archdiocese of Regina, awaits a new moderator of diocesan life. Therefore, we thought of you, venerable brother, 
who have shown yourself to be well endowed with both human and priestly qualities, as well as pastoral experience, and are seen to be worthy to shepherd this flock. Accordingly, having listened to the advice of the congregation for bishops, by the fullness of our apostolic apostolic authority, we release you from the bonds of the former diocese, and we appoint you Bishop of Saskatoon, conferring upon you the due rights and imposing the relative obligations. It is our wish that you inform the community of this diocese of our decree, and we invite them to consider you as a most esteemed father, teacher, and guardian, praying to the Lord that under your guidance, not being conformed to this age, but transformed by the renewal of your mind, reference Romans 12, verse 2, the faith of the Christian people may be strengthened day after day. Given in Rome at St. Peter's, this 12th day of the month of September, in the year of our Lord, 2017, the fifth of our pontificate, signed Francis Pope. My dear friends, we have heard the apostolic letter. Dear Bishop Mark, it is a great honor and privilege to welcome you as our newly installed Bishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Saskatoon. We gather as a community representing the many lives, stories, gifts, and talents that are woven together to create the beautiful tapestry of our diocese. And so it is my privilege to introduce to you and to invite forward a variety of representatives of this tap tapestry to extend a personal welcome to you, Bishop Mark. Bishop Mark, you may come forward as you welcome the representatives. Well, representing the Council of Priests and the Presbyterate, I invite Father Matthew Ramsey to please come forward. Welcoming Bishop Mark, representing the Dioc Diocesan Pastoral Council, Linda Clausen.
representing the, the various and many members of Our Lady that enriches our diocese, I invite the Hill family to come forward, Caitlin and Graham Hill with their children, Ali, Isla, Everett, Emilia, Ari, and Esme. We are a diocese that enjoys the presence of several rites, representing these rites. The Ukrainian Catholic rite, I invite Father Yanko Koloshny and wife Jenka, their son Alex Koloshny, Koloshny and his wife Rosemary and grandsons Noah, Christian, Thomas, Maximus, and great Gabriel to welcome Bishop Mark. Representing our Chaldean Catholic community, I invite Kazar, Estifo, and family, Nizreen, Natasha, Nathan, Nadine, Natalie, and Carol to welcome Bishop Mark. And from the Cyril Malabar Catholic community, Father Plogen Anthony with Bobby Lucos and Sally Matthew. Welcoming Bishop Mark, representing the various religious communities of both men and women, Sister Teresita de Cambites and Sœur Dolores Poussière. as well as Father Ihani and Wareham and Brother Kurt Van Curren. Representing the various Catholic institutions of education, I invite Dr. Terence Downey of St. Thomas More College to please come forward to welcome Bishop Mark. From Greater Saskatoon Catholic Schools, Diane Boyko and Greg Chatlin. I invite David Hardy of Greater Saskatoon Catholic Schools Foundation to please come forward. From St. Therese Institute of Faith and Mission, Jim Anderson and Vicki Srublowski. From St. Peter's College, Robert Harismachuk to please come forward and welcome Bishop Mark. Representing Catholic Health in the Diocese of Saskatoon, I invite Scott Irwin from Emmanuel Care to please come forward and welcome Bishop Mark. From Catholic Health Association of Saskatoon, Sandra Carey. We enjoy strong ecumenical relationships in our diocese representing other church leaders, I invite Bishop Sid Hagen of the Saskatchewan Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada to please come forward and welcome Bishop Mark. Very Reverend G. Scott Pittendry, representing the Anglican Diocese of Saskatoon. I'd like to invite David Smith Dr. Jeremy Martini, representing the Saskatoon Evangelical Roman Catholic Commission for Common Witness, to welcome Bishop Mark. We also enjoy strong relations with other faith communities. Tonight, representing the Holocaust Memorial Angudas Israel community, Ron and Jan Gitlin, to please come forward. Representing our First Nations communities and our relationships with them as a diocese, 
Henry Lafond of the Office of the Treaty Commissioner, accompanied by Carol Zubiak from the Diocesan Council for Truth and Reconciliation. I invite Elder Michael Maurice with Debbie Ledoux, representing as well the Diocesan Council for Truth and Reconciliation, to please come forward and welcome Bishop Mark. I'd like to invite as well from the Diocesan Council for Truth and Reconciliation and from Our Lady of Guadalupe community, Gail Weenie, Elder Gail Weenie. Representing our, our many civic leaders, I invite His Worship Mayor, Mayor Charlie Clark, representing all elected representatives across our diocese, to welcome Bishop Mark. And once again, let us show our, show our support and welcome to our new Bishop Mark Hageman. to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the
us pray. <coughs> o God, you have willed that your church be the sacrament of salvation for all nations, so that Christ's saving work may continue to the end of the ages. Stir up, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and grant that they may feel a more urgent call to the work for the salvation of every creature, so that from all the peoples on the earth, one family and one people of your own may arise and increase. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Oh, thank you. Lecture du premier livre de Maccabée. En ces jours-là, Matthias répondit d'une voix forte. « Toutes les nations qui appartiennent aux États du roi peuvent bien lui obéir, en rejetant chacune la religion de ses pères, en se conformer à ses commandements. Mais moi, mes fils et mes frères, nous suivrons l'alliance de nos pères. » Que le ciel nous préserve d'abandonner la loi et ses préceptes. Nous n'obéirons pas aux ordres du roi. Nous ne dévierons pas de notre religion, ni à droite, ni à gauche. Alors Matthias se mit à crier d'une voix forte à travers la ville. Ceux qui sont enflammés d'une ardeur jalouse pour la loi et qui soutiennent l'alliance, qu'ils sortent tout de suite de la ville avec moi. Il s'enfuit dans la montagne avec ses fils, en abandonnant tout ce qu'ils avaient dans la ville. Alors beaucoup de ceux qui recherchaient la justice et la loi s'en allèrent avec vivre avec eux au désert. Parole du Seigneur. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, the Lord at all times. God's praise 
shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord. For God has been so good to me. Glorify the Lord with me, together let us all praise God's name. I called the Lord and he answered me, from all my troubles God set me free. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Worship the Lord, all you people. You'll want for nothing if you ask. Taste and see that God is good. In God we need put all our trust. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. 
the word of the Lord. with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like the branches and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You do not choose me, but I chose you. And I appoint you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. This is a big place. I could fit every church in the Northwest Territory in this place. Anyway, brother bishops and priests, deacons, 
religious, ecumenical and interfaith colleagues, honored guests, people of God of the Diocese of Saskatoon, all brothers and sisters in our one God and in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Firstly, I want to thank you all for your great efforts, the efforts you have made to plan and prepare for this installation event. I am also grateful for the people who have made great efforts to be here for this celebration. All of this is quite overwhelming and not where any of us expected to be. The good people of the Diocese of Saskatoon have been waiting for some time for the appointment of a new bishop. And since the news of the appointment, I have very much appreciated the outpouring of welcome and support. I have said repeatedly that the appointment here is, well, bittersweet. I did not expect the le to leave the Diocese of Mackenzie Smith at this time. There's just too much work to do yet. However, God's ways are not always our ways, and God has a plan for this community and the faith communities of the North, to say the least. I am very grateful to Almighty God and the people of my former Northern Diocese for their support and patience with me, and for what they have taught me about faith and our common journey together of ongoing healing and growth as we come to know the heart of the one God of the world. The scripture readings tonight, I think, provide a sobering and enlightening message that is appropriate for this occasion. The first reading, 1 Maccabees, is a reading we hear at this time of the church year as we approach the feast of Christ the King, as we reflect on our present time of living and waiting for the joyful, in joyful hope for the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As you know, this litur the end of the liturgical year is a time when we look back and look forward, reflecting on the meaning of waiting on God's kingdom to fully come, a kingdom and a journey that is already present to us in the life, ministry, and mission of Jesus Christ for the world. The features of this kingdom are utterly amazing. In fact, one might say out of this world, and yet God comes to us in this world. And this fact holds special meaning for all of God's faithful people. This place, this world, is where and when we live and act like God. In the case of our first reading, we look back to what was a difficult, very difficult time in Israel's history. The time of the Maccabees may be characterized as the faithful people of God living in a time and place when faith and religious life was seen as a threat to the reigning political regime of the day. Such faith and life was probably not understood and certainly not tolerated. Thus, it was to be abolished, eliminated. However, Matthias declares that he and his family, if made to choose between living by God's covenant or a way that demands turning God aside, would choose God. I am caught by the phrase, many who sought to live according to righteousness and justice went down to the wilderness to live there. Many people in Mackenzie Fort Smith have heard me recall an experience I had last year when two elders from the Satu Dene community of Delaney on Great Bear Lake asked to see me in my office. Because English was their second language, they brought an interpreter. The two elders said to me through the interpreter, Bishop, we want to tell you our hopes for our people for self-government. As you know, Dene and Inuit communities in the Northwest Territory have been working towards self-government for some time. Delaney is the latest community to formally celebrate the beginnings of its own self-government process. This process is long and arduous for the community. It seeks to bring together the various hopes and priorities of all community members as important structures and services are set up over time. 
as the community takes on oversight of its affairs and is self-determining. The elders said to me three times through the interpreter, Bishop, we want to tell you our hope for our people for self-government. I, I continued to say, please, I am very interested, tell me. They finally stated, our hope for our people for self-government is righteousness. Righteousness was repeated. The interpreter added, not self-righteousness, with a smile, righteousness. I didn't expect this answer. I quickly recalled the biblical meaning of righteousness, which is that which is of God or the way of God. Right then, I knew I was in the presence of two very wise and holy men. What did they mean by this? I think they meant that the people, that people, pin their hopes and dreams on many things. But we need to be careful to choose a vision and a goal that is truly a worthy and great end. I think they were saying that self-government, as very significant as it is, is not itself the goal or end, but the means, the important means, to achieve for this community a greater goal and purpose. And this goal for the two elders was nothing short of acting and being like God. Wow, did these elders set the bar high. I have wondered since how they are doing with realizing such a vision. I have tried it as best I can to help with this when I can. It's one thing for a religious person, like a priest or bishop, to talk about holy and religious things. It's quite another for everyone else. Or is it? I think the community strives to bring forward this message. For example, later this summer I attended the annual spiritual gathering at this community. The leadership of the gathering prayed and decided that the theme and focus of this year's gathering would be to strengthen the young families of the community and especially the young men and fathers who they felt needed much support. At one of the gatherings, one of the older men, clearly a peer amongst the other men, said the following, you young men, your families are very important and they need you. They need you more than you may realize. In fact, you are the priest of your family. You are the priest. Everyone, including myself, shuddered at this unexpected declaration. The only ones who didn't shudder were the young women and the wives. They just simply smiled and nodded their heads. <coughs> of course, if you wanted one of the greatest biblical summaries of the way of righteousness to be like God in this world, you get this in our second reading. Paul's letter to the Philippians on having the same mind and heart as that of Christ Jesus. I must admit that this passage has challenged and intrigued me since before the time of my ordination to priesthood. Jesus Christ, the God who is fully human, has quite a distinction. He is the one of great talent, of ability, power. He does not exploit this. And furthermore, he empties himself, becoming a slave, not just a servant in the Greek, for all of God's people. This servant way is ultimately revealed in the scandal of his crucifixion. Again, the most humiliating and scandalous way to die in that time. The reading concludes, the only reason that every knee bends at the name of Jesus is because he boldly goes where no one has gone before and where no one would ever dream of going. Can you and I also go this way? Can you and I act like God by imitating such intimacy with God and such generous service and humility for our world? Brothers and sisters, this is the bar held high, not only for me as a bishop, 
but for each of us as we hear and respond to God's call for our lives, to live and be excellent, excellent people. And what does such excellence looks like, look like? Excellence in the Catholic Christian tradition is not a feature that just impacts my life as if it were merely about me being better than another. In fact, my own living out of excellence will impact how I help my brothers and sisters live excellent lives, and they, me. Indeed, the call to righteousness will also involve striving to seek deeper meaning and significance in all things, seeing as God sees. I recall my first year serving at Corpus Christi College, Liberal Arts College in Vancouver. The student chaplaincy team chose as a theme and focus for the academic year, super vivere, a Latin term meaning survive. However, we all soon understood why they chose this theme. Super vivere has several meanings, including to live, remember to live, to live beyond, to live longer than, to outlive. On this point, Pope Francis reminds us to move beyond what he calls the temptation of survival which he says, quote, turns what the Lord presents as an opportunity for mission into something dangerous, threatening, potentially disastrous. The Pope, who as we all know is a religious, was speaking on February 2nd of this year on the feast of the presentation of the Lord and the World Day for Consecrated Life. All of us can apply this advice and wisdom to our lives. We do face many tasks and challenges. Our church, our schools, our healthcare facilities, our local community, our families. Lest the world and its complex affairs so overwhelm that we look at the surface of things, the constant voice of our Savior says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. That voice calls and leads us even deeper. Take the words of our gospel. No one has greater life than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing. I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, I chose you to go and to bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. Righteousness and super vivere call us deeper than we might have ever imagined and may be the greatest unknown future. Such a life and future together will involve ongoing healing and personal work. Again, I am grateful to my indigenous brothers and sisters for teaching me what a healing journey that is lifelong is about. They have also taught me that if you want God's help, if you want God's help, make sure you're ready to get it. I share with you a recent experience I heard from one of our lay leaders last month who was sharing with a group gathered for a diocesan leadership training event. She stated she got on an elevator on a Sunday morning and halfway down the local drug dealer also got on the elevator. She knew who he was and he knew she knew what he was doing on a Sunday morning. To break the awkward silence she said I'm going to church want to come with me. He said uh, thanks but no. She then said, well, if you like, I can pray for you. After a brief pause, he said, thanks. The next day, she was again on the elevator, and he again came on to the same elevator. This time, he was rattled. The woman asked, so how are you doing today? He said, are you still praying for me? 
She said, yes. He said, then stop. <laughs> I have lost my cell phone and all my contacts. <laughs> be careful. Be careful what you ask for. You might get it. But that's okay if we dare to trust the one who leads us along the healing journey ahead. Uh, finally, I am very grateful and wish to acknowledge the pastoral leadership of this diocese's recent shepherds. Bishops James Wise Gerber, Albert Legat, and most recently Donald Bolin. I only highlight what you all know well. Their fervent love for the church, their deep love for all of God's people, and their lives of personal holiness and service have been a great gift of pastoral leadership. I come to, the, to a diocese that is in very good shape, in very large part because of them and, of course, the excellent work of a committed and dynamic people of God, clergy, religious, and laity. I ask your prayers and support as I take on this task. I commit and pledge to strive to serve this local church as its bishop to the best of my ability with all of God's help. I ask your patience with me as I was privileged to receive from the northern diocese I have just departed from. I conclude with one last reflection. As I left Mackenzie Fort Smith, I learned that there was no Dene word for goodbye. The best translation of the related sentiment is, until we meet again. What an appropriate expression as we celebrate the end of the church year and also when bridging and acknowledging the link between great faith communities. Looking forward to the journey ahead. God bless you all. Let us now stand and bring before God our prayers and petitions. Utip Fakam Hewikamik Egomina Mamawe Kitam Hewino Francis Okiskna Pati Hewin Eksekawi Oti Tikwak Nianote Kakio Isinoak Sagi Hitwin Kitimak Kinagewin Hear our prayer. Pour notre évêque Marc, afin qu'il soit guidé par le Saint-Esprit en ce début de ministère de notre diocèse, et qu'il soit encouragé par toutes nos prières. Prions le Seigneur. For the priests, deacons, religious, and lay leadership of our diocese, that they may continue to work to build up the kingdom of God on earth, following the example of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
Wir beten für die Jugend und die jungen Erwachsenen in unserer Diözese, dass sie Gottes Gegenwart in ihrem Leben erkennen und seinem Willen folgen. Herr, wir bitten dich, erhöre uns. Para sa lahat ng mga pamilya, na patuloy na naghahanap ng katuparan ng kanilang misyon sa pagmamahal at katapatan sa isa't isa. Manalangin tayo sa Panginoon. Lord, hear Xin cho cộng đoàn các giáo sứ cố gắng trở nên thành nơi chào đón và tiếp nhận hết mọi người vào bàn tiệc của Chúa. Chúng con cầu xin Chúa. Por nuestros hermanos y hermanas de otras congregaciones cristianas para que continúen realizando la misión a la cual el Espíritu Santo les ha llamado. Oremos al Señor. Fun awara wa lokunrin ati lobirin ninu esin ati igbagbo miran ti won wa otito ati ewa ife ni agbaye awa nbe o oluwa Za hore hister zdalci v coho svitu nechaj vo ne znajdu spoki ljubov u boži milosti čez lahinu turbotu inchek me molimo se do boha Za wszystkich tych, którzy są bezdomni, mieszkają w nieadekwatnych warunkach lub potrzebują bezpiecznej przystani. Ciebie prosimy. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life to serve our diocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, source of all blessing, hear all our prayers. Those we speak and those known by you in the depths of our hearts, we make all of these prayers in union with Mary, our mother, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings and prayers of your church, O Lord, rise up in the sight of your majesty and gain acceptance, just as the glorious passion of your Son was pleasing to you for the salvation of the whole world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself. Through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation as they turn back to you in spirit to grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, You loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, 
he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our, is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of the one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, Together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. <laughs> then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
Let us pray. May the offerings and prayers of your church, O Lord, rise up in the sight of your majesty and gain acceptance. Just as the glorious passion of your Son was pleasing to you for the salvation of the whole world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Archbishop Luigi Bonazzi, I hear, I hear you have some words to share. We would love to hear. Thank you. <laughs> Very dear <coughs> brother bishops, brother priest, um, all of you, dear brothers and sisters, it is a joy for me at the end of this moving uh, ceremony, Eucharistic celebration, in which we have taken a deep participation to transmit to you as a representative of Pope Francis here in Canada, the closeness, the, the, the prayers, the affection, the, the benediction of uh, Pope Francis to each of one of you and uh, to you, to all the diocese of Saskatoon and uh, through the diocese of, Sask of Saskatoon to all Canada. <clears throat> and the first things as a representative of Pope Francis I would like to say is to a word of Thanks of gratitude to our brothers and sisters of the Diocese of uh, Mackenzie for Schmidt for the gift they have given uh, to you here in Saskatoon. I wish you that uh, to experience these beautiful uh, words of Jesus saying, uh, Give and you will receive. And since you have given a very good gift, I wish you really to receive a, an even greater gift and be sure of this. No. So, dear Bishop Agamon, uh, welcome, welcome and thank you for accepting to come to uh, Saskatoon. I welcome you with the words which were say, uh, wrote to the Apostolic Nancia to, to me one year before your appointment, before your nomination in Saskatoon. And our words uh, written by a person, but I think representing the spirit, the mind of all of you, it is said, our diocese has a rich tradition of extraordinary leadership from our bishops, each coming at the right time with the right gifts to answer to the needs of our diocese at a given time. I firmly trust, though the person was uh, writing, I firmly trust that this will once again happen as we place all, uh, all our trust in God and in the Holy Mother Church. And this afternoon, when the priests were meeting with the bishop, Father Stan Urbanowski almost repeated the same words. So, uh, you just have to continue this tradition of extraordinary leadership here in this <laughs> diocese. And uh, this gives me the occasion, the right, the beautiful opportunity to thank those 
extraordinary bishop that you have had until now. No? So I thank you, dear Archbishop Bolen, for your sterling service to the church in Saskatoon. And before you, dear Archbishop Legat, and also Archbishop Weisberger for the pastoral uh, leadership they, do you have provided to this diocese. <clears throat> Building this diocese, this church, it is a church that together with the wider community has welcomed the stranger, the immigrant, and the refugees, and making really true the motto of this province, in multis agentibus vires, which, as you know, means from many people, strength. No. And all this helped with the precious help uh, of you, my brother Bishop, and I uh, thank you for uh, the help that we will continue to uh, offer and provide to your new pastor. So that now is for, for all of you the occasion uh, to write a new page. No? Uh, uh, God gives us from time to time this possibility to open a blank page and to start filling these blank pages with, with uh, uh, deeds, deeds, good deeds, uh, worthy to be, uh, to be passed and to be uh, 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 read, read, read by the future generations. So, uh, with the help of God, uh, dear uh, Archbishop Mark, you will start writing this new page. So, uh, I don't know what will be the, the, the uh, how this new page will be written, but I just, before ending, I just would like to offer you some pencils with which, with which write the new uh, page. And those pencils are, again, uh, testimonies which I received and which help us in this process to offer to the Holy Father uh, news and informations to make uh, his decision and to choose the new bishop. Saskatoon, one pencil, Saskatoon is a diocese which embraced the Second Vatican Council and has experienced strong leadership from clergy and lay faithful, of course, together with their bishop. It is a diocese with a tradition of healthy relations between clergy and laity, where the gifts of lay people have been summoned forth. Please, continue fulfilling these witnesses which I have received and which I passed on to you. Uh, again, um, there is, so naturally I have chosen from the, the, the many, many letters, uh, information that I received, I have, I have chosen something. Sorry if I may be injustice with someone but let each one of us be glad for what it is said for the others. No. Every compliment uh, one receives is a compliment for everybody. So it is said, there is one Francophone parish and there are three bilingual parishes among the, all the other English parishes. While the Francophone population in the diocese is small in number, they have contributed greatly in, bringing of, in the bringing of faith to Saskatchewan. 
Please, dear brothers, uh, francophone, continue. <laughs> but, and then also, uh, so I, 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 I am pleased to give this tribute to the contribution of the francophone community and also to, to share with you these other observations. It said, our parishes are increasingly multicultural. The decline in the practice of the faith among young, youngster generations, and this is something that we have to take care for of, has to some degree been balanced by the significant number of Filipino, Vietnamese, other, within the diocese who have moved recently to Saskatchewan. So thank you for all uh, you now, the newcomer, uh, especially from, from Asia, uh, uh, which, uh, and who are feeling to, uh, bringing you with your person, uh, so some new blood helping the, the community in Saskatchewan. Please continue. Then, uh, uh, then here there are, I read rapidly, but they are very important pencil to continue to use in your diocese. There is a significant number of women religious in the diocese and a handful of religious men, but most are retired. The leadership they provided was enormous, but for the most past part, they have passed on the torch to lay people especially in the field of education and health. I express my gratitude to really to your many religious women, especially, but also men. And I encourage you to feel the responsibility to renew the tradition of religious life in your diocese because, because religious life belongs to the essential a dimension is an essential dimension of the Catholic Church. We have to ask the Lord to renew the tradition of religious life. And then there are three beautiful things I read quickly and I have almost finished. <laughs> A dispro <coughs> disproportionate number of lay movement Catholic Christian outreach and face-to-face -face ministry are among the best known, were born in Saskatoon. There are a number of missionary initiatives to the developing world which, are, which also are based in Saskatoon, reflecting a global vision and a deep de generosity. That this, this is a pencil with which to continue to write the, the, uh, the life of your diocese. One area, area where Saskatoon has provided national leadership is in the field, field of ecumenism. We thank God for this. Please continue. The diocese is also blessed with St. Joseph More College, St. Thomas More College, St. Peter's College and the, uh, the Benedict Abbey in Münster, and St. Thierry's <coughs> Institute of Formation for Young Adults looking to spend a year deepening their faith. There is, there is great potential for engagement with the students on faith issues through our Catholic school system continue to treasure this instrument you have. And I am sure that it is a special love for school and, and young people, Bishop, your Bishop Mark will really accompany with his great interest and support these important tools you have for the evangelization of the diocese. And uh, last, but not least, very seriously, 
it is this, which I read in, written in many different ways. I just <coughs> took one. One of the major social and pastoral challenges for uh, the Diocese of Saskatoon and the upcoming bishop will be the ongoing challenge of building healthy relations with the indigenous population and guiding the church in learning to walk together, learning to walk together with indigenous people in addressing the many systemic injustices and social challenges they continue to face in Saskatchewan. This is without doubt a major soci societal challenge facing the people of Saskatchewan and it is also a great pastoral challenge. Let us ask that more and more this mutual desire within the Catholic Church, within the society, and especially also in our brothers, the indigenous population, the First Nation, this desire of a, a really a, a new friendship, a, 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 a process of healing and reconciliation may grow and grow and grow for the benefit of all. My dear friends, welcome the new pastor and receive him as Pope Francis urges as a father, a teacher, and a guardian. <coughs> and together with him, continue to build this precious gift, which is the church, Catholic Church in Saskatchewan, in unity, in friendship, with collaboration with everybody. Once again, I extend to all of you, and particularly to the civil and religious authority, the greetings and affection of Pope Francis, and in his name, I am pleased to convey his apostolic blessing as a pledge of peace and favor in the Lord. God bless you. Thanks. For some reason, I feel a little bit lighter. I don't know why. <laughs> I confess a mortal sin, but it is when I don't look at the paper, but on, on, in the name of Pope Francis, well, I have to say a great thanks to your apostolic uh, to your diocesan administrator for over one year to your <laughs> great <laughs> so it was here on my paper but I overlooked <laughs> on behalf of Pope Francis thank you feel really light now. <laughs> Just a, a brief word uh, on behalf of the diocese, uh, dear Bishop Mark. As we began our celebration this evening, we were welcomed, you were welcomed by a number of individuals and groups that represent the diversity and the texture of our diocese, their unique gifts and the culture of the province of Saskatchewan. We acknowledge in a special way that this historical event, this moment, happens on Treaty 6 territory, home of the Cree peoples and the traditional homeland of the Métis. Many hands extended themselves to you in a handshake, Bishop Mark, and from this moment on, these and many more hands will extend themselves to you and invite you into their lives as our shepherd. You come to us already as a bishop, 
as was noted earlier, in a diocese that historically celebrated the ordination of its last six bishops. And we have done a good job with our bishops, and we have formed wonderful bishops. Perhaps we have done too good a job. They go off to be archbishops <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> But Bishop Mark, you come prepackaged. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, after a long, long, long period of discernment, has seen fit that you are the right person for the job. Your bishop's heart has been shaped by the people of the North, and you bring with you a great love and commitment to our First Nation brothers and sisters. Your love for the young and your commitment to Catholic education is well known. And in your previous roles in the Archdiocese of Vancouver, you worked closely with your brother priests and in the administration of the diocese. And we know that these qualities will continue to flow in many areas of service and ministry in our diocese. You have, as you have shared, a hands-on approach. And this invites you to enter the mess and the mystery of people's lives and to use a very poignant image of Pope Francis to take on the smell of the sheep. We look forward to sharing with you our many fragrances and our many aromas. <laughs> we invite you to journey with all of us. And as you do, I assure you that you will find much, much support here. You will be much loved, I promise you that. And I assure you as you speak, as I speak on behalf of so many, that wherever you go, you will meet an open door. May your bishop's heart continue to be shaped by us, the people of the prairies, as it was shaped, first shaped by the peoples of the north. And may the Holy Spirit not delay in sending the people of the Diocese of Fort Mackenzie, of Mackenzie Fort Smith a shepherd soon. Bishop Mark, once again, welcome. My job here now is not to make things too much longer. I, I promised my brother, my nephew, and my niece this would be a short ceremony because it's just an installation and uh, I don't think they believe me anymore. Anyway, uh, I do want to express thanks on behalf of the diocese to uh, certain uh, people, I won't name names, but I will describe the general areas that made this installation a real blessed time tonight. I, I want to acknowledge the elders who led the smudge and as well the drummers and the dancers that welcomed uh, us into uh, this Treaty 6 territory and into this uh, spiritual celebration. I want to acknowledge the staff and colleagues from the Diocese of Mackenzie Fort Smith and from the Archdiocese of Vancouver that actually in some little ways contributed and also made great efforts to be here. I'd like to acknowledge brother bishops as well as priests and deacons from this uh, area and from many other areas of Western Canada who made the effort to come. I'd like to acknowledge the various religious men and women from across the diocese in particular, and there are very many. I'd like to acknowledge the leadership from our indigenous communities and really appreciated their welcome this evening. I'd also like to acknowledge various political and civic representatives uh, who uh, are with us tonight from both the Northwest Territory and uh, locally as well. I'd like to acknowledge the many ecumenical and interfaith colleagues from across the area who represent the various churches and organizations uh, that I look forward to meeting and working with. I'd like to acknowledge representatives from the many, many Catholic <coughs> institutions, including Catholic elementary and high schools, institutes, institutions of higher learning, and our many Catholic health and care facilities. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge many other Catholic groups and organizations, and in particular mention, because of an enormous amount of work done, the Knights of Columbus and the Catholic Women's League. 
I'd like to acknowledge the music and the decor ministry, and there was a lot of work done on that, and I'd like to thank them very, very much. I'd like to acknowledge the various members of the installation committee, including staff and diocesan organizations. Two more special thanks. Uh, Archbishop Bonazzi already acknowledged, but I want to join with this, the tremendous work and leadership of Father Kevin McGee for his diocesan administration uh, during the time of waiting for a bishop. It was uh, pretty long and there's a lot coming at him. And uh, I also treasure now, in a special way, my time with him during the ad limit of visit in uh, the Vatican last spring. And the last person I'd like to acknowledge, I hope he doesn't mind, uh, actually is my brother. Uh, and I do that because when I was called to be a bishop for Mackenzie, I had one major worry that I think everyone would relate to. Uh, I had two uh, elder parents and uh, going to the Northwest Territory from Vancouver was like going off the edge of the planet. And, uh, and so one of the biggest issues to saying yes uh, was I have one sibling, my brother, and my parents uh, were demanding more and more need and care, and so a lot would depend on him. And I shared this with him, and um, the bottom line for him was, uh, well, didn't you pledge obedience? My brother was telling me this. Um, didn't you pledge obedience at your ordination? I said, well, yeah. He says, well, you know what you have to do. I'll take care of it and we'll, we'll deal with this. So um, this summer, mom passed, and mom passed rather suddenly, actually while I was at Pine Channel in, North, in the Athabasca region, and my brother and my father were with my mother in the hours before she passed. So I want to acknowledge mom, who is, uh, my brother pointed out earlier, actually is from the Prince Albert area, and then moved to Vancouver when she was 18. And uh, I, I think she's with us in a very special way. And I thank and acknowledge my brother for his support of our family. Thank you. God bless you. And um, let's see what the big guy has in store. God bless you. Let us conclude our prayer. Let us pray. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Our celebration Thanks. is ended. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. I woke up in darkness Surrounded by silence, so oh, where, where have I gone? I woke to reality, losing its grip on me, oh, where, where have I gone? Cause I can see the light before the sun
I was looking outside As if love would ever want to hide I'm finding I was wrong Cause I can feel the wind Before 